Okay, my friends, this has finally come to a head. They realize the proton is not what they suspected. It's a, a rubbery, elastic thing, not a solid, blocky thing that they always thought it was. And the reason it's elastic is because it's made out of particles exactly like this, which are little tiny bar magnets. This tells it all right here. Proton's electric polarizability, that means you can polarize it, that means it's a dipole. It reveals how susceptible the proton is to deforming or stretching in an electric field because it's being pushed and shoved and stretched and drawn and all that. Listen to this. There is something that we're clearly missing at this point. The proton is the only composite building block in nature that is stable. And I, I agree with it. It's stable at a certain quantity number of these little particles, which is about 1836. So, what does it mean if we don't understand a proton? If we are missing something fundamental in that, it has implications or consequences for all of physics, all of science, all of chemistry, all of geology, all of biology. It is the building block that tells us how everything in nature works. We have no idea right now because we didn't even know how, how light works. We don't know how gravity works. We don't know how dark matter is. And electron flood theory solves all of that. Okay, this is Fermi Labs discussion about the tiniest particles they can find. They find this one, the black one, and I agree, it's, it can't change. It's, this is just a big chunk. But this is not protons. These are way down in the tiniest particles there are, which are muons and electron neutrinos. That one there is a glowy one. They say have no energy. Here's what it is. I mean, they say it has no mass. It's, it's just all energy. All right, this is what this particle actually looks like. This one never changes, and this one get big and small. That's how we squirted it through our Venturi. And, and that's exactly what he says. They're, one of them is like a bowling ball, and the other one is an extended particle. have a fixed size, the black one. It never changes. The other one is a mathematical zero size, but it has a field. He's exactly correct. Exactly. This has a field around it. And that wants to glue onto another one of these, but it will push another white one away. It says, stay away from me. So they end up coating molecules. Now, I was just going over this one here. This is from Fermilab. Same people. I'm going to keep it all under one roof. And they were talking to this physicist about the neutrinos. They're trying to say, can, can neutrinos speed up or slow down? What's going on with neutrinos? And she says, the important thing to remember is that particles are also waves. I'm not sure they fully understand this. I can show the particles, and I can show the waves, and I can show them actually coming apart. All right, so you saw Fermi Lab. That's one there, and these two, no, they don't exist. It's only one size. I don't care if it's red or green or blue or whatnot. This one, I agree, is the color that goes along with that. And here we are right here with red. And I will show you green is the same ex exact particle, only it's much more powerful. And here's the same particles that they were looking for at Fermi Lab. Those two are these two. Two of them back to back are the bar magnets that I was talking about. As they go through the air, you see down here? You see that one glowing? And the other one's not glowing? If you could see down at the front of that glowy one, you see those little white, I mean little red particles? What's going on is this is going through the air this way. This one here is bumping into everything. It's, 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 get out of my way. Well, this starts to charge up. And what will happen is it will flip. Then this one starts to come forward and charge up. Right now, it's in the trailing part. It'll charge up, and then it'll flip again, and then it'll flip again, and then it'll flip again. It's up spin and down spin, they call it. That's all it is, but they're two pieces. They can come apart. Now, if they end up pushing against another particle, they'll end up like this. You can't get them together. You see it? That's what the push is against those. Everything is pushed to shove. 
And that's all there is to a photon. And this is all there is, is to an electron. Now don't forget, these are the two particles from Fermilab. They're identical to what they were looking for and identical to what they claim they react like. And I agree. And here they are right here. The muon neutrino is a black ball. The electron neutrino is a white ball. When we shot these down at our Venturi, we could see the white one attached to the black one. And here, the black one leaves the white one. The white one gets squirts right through. The black one, I don't know where it goes. It goes around here and does whatever it does. These come into some more black ones. Now, I don't think this one here jumped ahead to reattach to the white down here, but they do reattach. So this is fission, this is fusion. And this, I thought, was acceleration, and I still think it is. I think it accelerates and then it pushes back. And that's why they see the neutrinos when they see them in their neutrino states. They see them just at, they say it's almost the speed of, speed of light. For all practical purposes, it is the speed of light. And I agree with that, because they're pushing, bouncing, push, 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 push. So they're, they're not continuously just flowing through easily through the atmosphere. They're being bang, boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang. But they're getting through, and they're almost the speed of light. I agree with that. Now, they talk about the, the one of them being really pushy, and other ones not so pushy. Well, that's the red here, and that's the green. Through the same slit at the same time. These engage way out here, again. And the, the only reason they're engaging here is because the red is making a disturbance in front of them. And it pushes the red out of the way in a barrel roll. That never happens because it has to be polarized to the earth. They never go this way, and that's what's happening here. They always go this way. All right. It's actually this way here. The red charges up, then the red charges up, then the red charges up, then the red charges up. And, and that's the muon flip. You see, it, obviously it's much more energetic. All right, this is, it's starting to come together. This is exactly in line with the Venturi. There's other light up here, but it's not exactly in line. So it's not getting bang, 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 bang. That's what's making these things display. And here they break apart. As you saw, the white and the black falls apart. All right, so they talk about a particle in a way of no question. The particle is here, but I, this is pushing against all of these other ones. And it's going to flip and flop and flip and flop as it comes forward and getting them out of the way. It's a pushy one. It's going to push. Now, this accelerates, as you saw, and the particle becomes manifest, and then it falls apart when it goes through the venturi. Now, there's the green, extremely powerful, coming through the venturi. And the same thing going on here. Here's it's charging up, and now all of a sudden you can see it's getting almost ready to flip. And when it flips, it'll go just like that. And then the top one will charge up. And this one that was fully charged will start to discharge in the back. All right, that's how they we'll call it the muon wobble. All right, they know they got a problem, and I have a solution. But it requires to look at this as the fundamental particles. This is the muon, electron, neutrino glued together to create what we always thought was an electron. That's what we always thought that was an electron, but nobody's ever seen the black matter before. So that's 95% of the universe is missing, and that's exactly what they say, and there it is. It's attached to the things that we can see. That's all. And photons are just made of two electrons back to back. It bounces. Molecules are just made of 1835 or 1836 or so in stable little chunks that create periods. They call it periodicity. All right, the periodic table. And they, they, they become stable at certain places. I can't account for that. It's, just, I, it's got something to do with sh resonance shaping, just like, like Tesla said, vibration and frequency. All right, now, there's a lot here to be, I, I mean, they admit they got problems. I think we could have a free energy. I think we could create free energy right now, and I mean quick. Because this is, a, all these are is lasers. They know how to receive and so accept the solar energy right now, and they can filter it and process it. That's not a problem. It's all done already. We just need to be able to engineer this and 
pick up on this extremely high energy. This is high energy. Whenever you see something bright like that, it means you have an increase in energy. What we need is power. P equals I times E. P is power. I is current, which is the number of electrons, and E is the voltage. The higher the color, the higher the color and brilliance you see, that the higher the voltage, basically. So I don't care if the current goes up or not. The power is going to go up if this goes up. And this is going up like crazy. So we're going to get power out of this one way or the other. I can't see any possible. I was worried that we're not going to have enough electrons. It just looks bright and so forth. No. As long as you have enough push, which is, is, is um, voltage. And this is increase in voltage. That's exactly what this is, an increase in voltage. So if the voltage goes up, the power goes up. What we need is power to go up. And we can do it for free with something just like this. Can you see that? No, you can't. Right there. Our laser shoots that little beam down just like it does up here in the picture. And instead of just letting it go off into space, we harvest it right there. And Fermilab and CERN say that, yes, right in here, you're going to have your muons and your sterile, uh, sterile muons and electron showers. I think I showed you, but I'm going to show you one more time. Don't forget, this is what we did with the laser for nothing. We didn't add any energy whatsoever other than a venturi and force the fields to compress with the other fields, just like you would hitting head on, only we're forcing them into each other sideways. Now do a little research on your own. Look up what a muon neutrino is and a new electron neutrino, because there they are right there. The muon neutrino is the black ball. The electron shower comes from the electron neutrino, which was the white ball. Fission, fusion. They claim that this is a minimum of 207 times increase in power. And if that's correct, we can use half of that to keep the system running and the other half just is free and you never have to do anything to it. No, never have to add anything you could carry it around in a lunchbox plug anything that exists right now right into it take them out into disaster areas into the fields into the woods into fires hurricanes storms and that you could carry one of these around on a like i say like a little lunchbox